Well, in an effort to maintain a healthy weight, many have turned to intermittent fasting. It involves restricting eating to a limited number of hours each day. But a new study suggests the practice might have some unintended consequences. It found that those who limited their eating across less than eight hours per day were 91% more likely to die from cardiovascular disease than those who ate across 12 to 16 hours per day. The research analyzed over 20,000 U.S. adults and was presented to the American Heart Association by scientists at a medical school in China. Let's bring in Canada Tonight medical contributor, Dr. Samir Gupta, to discuss this study uh, a little bit more. So, Dr. Gupta, good to see you. Intermittent fasting, it is very popular. Uh, what is this exactly? Yeah, so you're absolutely right. It's gained a lot of popularity, and we're really talking about a regimen where, for periods of time, you, you completely or nearly completely restrict your calorie consumption. And there's different ways of doing it. Um, some people will do alternate day fasting, so feast days, famine days. Uh, some people do what's called 5-2, so you eat for five days, you fast for two. Uh, but the more common way of doing it is time, daily time-restricted feeding. Well, you'll, you'll restrict your calorie consumption to a certain number of hours in the day. Like in this study, what they're studying is this idea where you eat in eight hours and you fast for the other 16 hours. Okay, so uh, this is one study here, but are, are there any additional studies that have been done before showing benefits or harms? Yeah, really important, Travis. There's, there's a really robust uh, body of literature around this. It's been very well studied. Um, you know, we sort of have a cultural thing here around, you know, three meals a day and snacks, but a lot of Eastern cultures have fasting. It's very common. And, and the argument that's made is that, you know, even from an evolutionary point of view, hundreds of thousands of years ago when we were cavemen, it was feast or famine. You, you have a kill, you eat for several days, and then you fast for several days. And so our metabolism, our body is adapted to that. And studies show that, yes, you know, when you fast, good things happen. At least short and medium term studies show that when you switch and you're, you're fasting, you switch from sugars to ketones as your main source of energy. And that switch results in better sugar metabolism, it results in less stress hormones, uh, lower signs of inflammation. We actually have studies in, in people who have diabetes and people who don't uh, that show that when you do this, you actually improve your sugar levels, you improve cholesterol in some studies, blood pressure. Um, your, your obesity, if people who have obesity, that improves. So a whole bunch of things that should correlate to better cardiovascular outcomes get better in these short to medium term studies. Okay, so, so there's that. So how does that all fit with this study's findings? Yeah, I think that's why we're talking about this, Travis. It's made a splash because it's the opposite of what largely you will see in the literature. And it really is saying that your risk of a cardiovascular event is pretty much double if you report using this diet. And so this is why it's, it's so shocking and surprising. So what are some of the pitfalls of this study in your opinion? Yeah, lots of pitfalls. You know, the studies I mentioned earlier, those are randomized controlled trials. So you, you randomize people to this diet or another sort of normal eating pattern diet, usually with the same number of calories over the day, and you show these benefits. Uh, but what you don't know in those studies is, does that translate to less heart attacks and strokes over time? And that's hard to do in a randomized trial because you'd have to keep these people on the diet potentially for years. Uh, so the way to answer that question is just observationally to say, well, people who do this for years and years, do they do better? Do they have less heart attacks, et cetera? And that's what they tried to do in this study. It's a survey study, like you mentioned. And so periodically they would ask people about their eating habits, and then they would ask them what kinds of cardiovascular events and other events occurred. Um, lots of pitfalls there. You're, you're trying to remember your eating habit. Mm -hmm. You're only reporting a few days out of each year. So you're not necessarily doing this for months or years in a sustained way. Uh, it could be that the people who were intermittently fasting were doing it because they had cardiovascular risk factors like diabetes or overweight or cholesterol. So it could have nothing to do with the fasting itself. We really don't know until we see the full report. And it's unclear if they collected this information. Okay, so a little birdie told me that you, doctor, are doing intermittent fasting yourself. Uh, are you reconsidering it now after this study? You know, I've been doing it for a long time, Travis. And, and for me, you know, it was a decision I made after really trying to understand what that literature shows. This is one study. We have a very robust literature that suggests that the mechanism for improved cardiovascular health in particular and other aspects of health is there. It's strong. I have to say this gives me pause. I'm going to want to see the full study, but comparing those studies and that body of literature to one study, uh, for me, this is not you know, enough to make a change, but it's enough to say, hey, we want more studies like this. 
there are things we don't understand and things we don't know. It's possible that short and medium term things improve, but there are things we don't know that cause harm long term. So we're going to want to see more research. But for now, I'm sticking with my regimen. There you go. Okay. Doctor, appreciate it. As always, that is Canada Tonight medical contributor, Dr. Samir Gupta.